Hey, good evening, ladies. Um, welcome back to session two of our coffee chats of women in the Bible. And this has been a great uh, blessing to me, re-looking at these women, these heroines. Well, some of them are heroines. Some of them are, that we'll be looking at aren't such uh, good girls. But uh, <laughs> we will be looking at these women in the Bible and just gleaning uh, life lessons for ourselves. And I, I've just enjoyed it so far, just getting a chance to, to really look at these ladies again. And so tonight, we're going to be looking at Rebecca. And uh, I have two beautiful speaking of Bible heroines here, uh, two <laughs> lovely uh, sisters in the Lord. So I'm going to have them introduce themselves that we'll be sharing tonight. I'm Jen Hunt. Um, I'm typically on the in the front of the sanctuary on the worship team, and that's definitely where I'm more comfortable than in this type of environment, but I'm really looking forward to this discussion. I'm 40 years old. I am the mother of three children, um, and they are between 9 and 13. Oh, nice. So it's kind of a fun stage yeah. right now in our lives. Um, you know, out of the diapers. Yes. You know, it's just starting into the fun. teenage years, so it, we're having a lot of fun in That's this phase. Awesome. Um, I work full time. I'm in the technology industry. I'm a manager, and um, I love what I do. And I love that uh, my husband actually is home with the kids. He homeschools our children, oh, and um, so it's a little bit of an unconventional uh, arrangement that we have, but it, it definitely works for us. Well, yeah. Knowing your family, I can see it does work. You have lovely children, and it. They, they're all here at the church. Your husband's great. We love him here, too. So um, great. We're so happy to have you here tonight, Jen. And all then right. this little cutie patootie over here. Thanks, Mom. <laughs> Hi, I'm Grace Hargraves. Uh, I'm 26. Uh, I work here at the church, actually at Calvary, as a graphic designer and also freelance on the side for graphic design. And I usually am behind the camera when serving for a church or behind a big computer screen. So this is also a little bit out of my comfort zone, but I am really enjoying it. Even doing, you know, being behind the camera last week for the session on Eve. So this is exciting. I get the sneak peek before anybody else does for these sessions. And uh, I really feel like this will be like, a lot of people will be blessed by watching them. So I'm excited yes. to be a part of it. Yes, I, I'm so glad to have um, women of various ages, various walks of life um, joining on these podcasts we have some going forward i was actually scheduling a little bit this weekend we have some 20 some, young 20s oh, yeah. like teen 20s coming on at I'm some point <laughs> yeah you're super young please and speaking of age i'm the old lady in the group here tonight 56 i'm the uh Bo pastor bobby's wife most of you may know that but just in case mm -hmm. um i'm the mother of three grown adult daughters who are just such a blessing in my life they God has been very very gracious to Bobby and I well our children love the Lord and are just such a gift to us um, my two older girls are married and I have four granddaughters I, we have a girl a girl uh, streak going here um, but again you know I can't say enough in fact I probably say too much about those granddaughters I'm sure I bore people but uh, <laughs> <laughs> they are they are our delight so anyway here we are um, we're gonna look at Rebecca tonight and she's an Old Testament heroine uh, many of you are familiar with her story but for those who might be new to the faith or a little rusty on your Old Testament I'm just gonna quick give you cliff notes just jot it in down if you'd like but you'll meet her story if you want to read this uh, later today uh, in Genesis chapters 24 to 27 pretty much and then on uh, it speaks of her a couple times after that but um, she was special in that Abraham as we all know is the father of faith uh, the one who is the father of the the, the, the nation eventually of Israel uh, in, in his history he had the son Isaac and he was his only son he waited a very long time for him uh, well I shouldn't say his only son but his the chosen son the son God had predicted he would have that would be the lineage of the Hebrew people and here's Isaac Sarah Abraham's wife has passed and, and they're both sad so he, he wants to get a wife for Isaac. And so he sends a servant back to his home country because at this point, Abraham was living in the south in the Canaanite country and there was all kinds of pagan people and he knew that he didn't want Isaac marrying from those people groups. So he implores his servant, please go back to my original area of my country um, which I think I think said is like kind of northern Mesopotamia area but sent this um, servant back to his house uh, his, his brother's house actually and um, to find a, 
that area anyway and find a, a girl from among that group. So that's where we meet Rebecca near a well as this servant went prayerfully asking God to lead him to find the right wife for Isaac. And boy, right there, isn't that a lesson, um, especially to all of us, but to single people especially, how we should seek to find a spouse, right, is trusting God to, you know, provide the right person. And um, that day, Rebecca didn't know what was waiting for her, did she? <laughs> so we meet her. So tell us a little bit about what we see in that first scene. Jen, why don't you tell us sure. a little bit about what it looked like that day? Well, so the first thing that we're told about Rebecca is that she's beautiful yeah right? that's the very first thing that we learn mm -hmm. but then we learn so much more in the next in the upcoming scripture where you know the servant was asked for some water yes and she immediately yeah you know, went to the well and and uh, and said drink my lord drink yeah. and so we learn not only is she beautiful but she has a servant's heart mm -hmm. and um she she gave water to um, the servant and then also or, and then also went on to feed his camels so yeah. she was a hard worker she sure so was she wasn't just beautiful she was a hard worker she was um, we also know based on what they tell us of her lineage that she was noble yeah. she was from a noble line but she right. was still not afraid to work hard um, so she was beautiful on the outside and the inside yes, as well. Yes, for sure. Yeah, you know, it's not, what, what did you, uh, same thing, it's yeah, just neat yeah, to see I that. Think, and I, I think even too, when you get the, the image of how she was even obtaining the water to go get it, I know we even were talking about like historically too, like she was running up steps to get that water and it wasn't yes. like, oh, I'm getting a cup of water. Like she was getting gallons and I yes. think like, wow, she's the opposite of me. She is a CrossFit girl, like <laughs> working with what she has in her surroundings. She must have been, I'll tell um, you what, yeah. But yeah, nothing, not wasting an, a moment, I, you know, to serve somebody and I yes. think like what a personality or just a trait to have, like not second guessing it, just going for it, serving, working hard. Yeah. Um, it definitely was like hitting me right between the eyes of like, maybe I need to work a little bit harder, <laughs> you know, <laughs> maybe less self care days, but um, yeah, that's who I, I kind of in that image, like I need that image in my head and yeah. I'm thinking, wow, she is just not only just getting water, but she's like hiking up to get water yeah. and carrying it back down. And for a lot of camels. It was like 10 camels. camels. And from what I understood that after a journey, the camel can drink 20 to 30 gallons of water. 10 of them. So, I mean, we're talking hours of work. Mm -hmm. This wasn't, you know, 15 right. minutes of like, we just go, and you know, between, run the faucet, you know, give the dog a drink yeah. or, or something, yeah. you know, I mean, these are large animals. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, it was, it was like you said, she was probably pretty diesel and just in terms of her, but again, Jenna, I, I, I have to say, I love this, um, the speed. It says everything when they used words with her, it seemed like she quickly, she went, you know, it was like yeah. kind of, she, she's, she works quickly. That is such a, um, uh, you're a manager. Don't you love people who are just so, yeah. you know, go-getters and yeah, self-starters? You, kind of, yeah. you get the sense that she had, there's ambition there. Of yeah, it, you know, that I agree. She, and she had to have been there for a reason. She wasn't just wandering around at the yeah. well for, it no, was her for no reason. her habit probably, right? right? But, yeah. So she was willing to drop what she was doing mm -hmm. to help someone. Yeah, so, yeah. absolutely. You know, she, she, it was a pattern probably of hard yeah. work in her life. I doubt that that was the first day she worked hard, right? right? I mean, it's right. a pattern. and. Um, and like you said, she had a servant's heart, and mm -hmm. that is beautiful to behold. Really, it is, mm -hmm. and I, and it's rarer than you think. I, yeah. I think sometimes, you know, one of the things I noticed too um, was I thought this was interesting. Um, and we're in twenty-four for those girls who want to open their Bible, but in verse sixteen, like you said, the first thing we hear now, the young woman was very beautiful to behold. And it says a virgin, and I thought that's really interesting. Um, I mean, you know, maybe it was added later in the text because you know they found out more of her story. But I think there was something that that servant knew that she was virginal. I think he saw a chasteness to her, um, a modesty, just a purity. Mm -hmm. I, I think there was like mm -hmm. she carried herself with yeah. purity. That now I may be reading in, but I, I it, it to me it was a little bit of a springboard too because it echoes other scriptures like. Um, First Timothy two nine and ten, where it says you know about our as women our outward adornment not only being of you know the plating of the hair but that's that spirit you know mm -hmm. um, a kind spirit. It talks about good works in uh, First Peter three similar mm -hmm. thing when it talks about the beauty of a woman that she be adorned with good works. So I think you know that's probably part of her beauty, but also her purity. Mm -hmm. And um, you know my heart as a mom, <laughs> you know, and I I got saved when I was nineteen and. Um, 
you know, I, I had wonderful women in the faith and, and not to be legalistic or anything, but young girls who are new to the faith, look for those women that you can emulate and just mm -hmm. in terms of their purity and you don't have to be, you know, you know, dowdy or wear a big old tent dress or, you know what I mean? Yeah. But, but I think it's something, you know, it's, it's, it's beautiful. It's mm -hmm. beautiful in the sight of the Lord. It's a beauty, attractiveness, um, to have a godly carriage, so to speak, you know, that you right. carry yourself with that. And she was noticed for that, you mm -hmm. know? So I think that was probably even the way she spoke. I think of that, um, you know, a lot of people around a well pulling up, you know, maybe there's other shepherdesses, shepherds, um, you know, she was distinctive, yeah. maybe even the way she spoke, you know, the things she did did say but didn't say, you know, that mm -hmm. kind of thing. Yeah. So I think that's a good lesson for us all to know as women. People are watching us mm -hmm. as Christian mm -hmm. women, and how do we conduct ourselves? What are they right. seeing, you know, yeah. when, they, when they see us? So um, mm -hmm. I think that's kind of an in interesting point. But anyway, so she does this amazing work. What else did we see about her um, when the, the servant actually makes himself known? Then... Um, he gives her this jewelry, which I think that's an interesting. Yeah, right? yeah. It's okay yeah. To have a nose ring, I guess. A nose <laughs> ring. That's right. She gets a nose <laughs> ring. Right. Okay, Grace. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's the thing I noticed. No, but, I don't have yeah. one, but I just want. Like yeah. you said, you don't have to be legalistic and in a tent. No. You can also wear a nose ring. That's and right. And bracelets are. and all these pretty things yeah. he, he was given, but um, he asks for some hospitality, which of course is a hospitality culture. But um, mm -hmm. again. You don't see any hesitation in our friend here, no. do we? No. Right. She immediately offers, we have plenty of straw and feed and a place to spend the night. Right. So she's just so, you know, quick-witted. She's very, right. like, quick to respond Bond. to a need and exactly. just offers them to come, offers him to come with her to her home. Yeah, and I, and I really I, like yeah. her. You know? Yeah, and it makes you think of just somebody who is so just very god focused and just always trusting in him like that is your response it's not you don't second mm -hmm. guess when especially when the lord's leading in you that right. way like you don't second guess to give to serve somebody you don't second guess to offer somebody hospitality night yeah, you know for me i was like yeah i want i want to have more of that response not like well i have the x y and z to do today and it's right. well no like what can yeah well how can i help what can right. i do you know it's that to welcome response. a stranger yeah. like that and she must have had it might have been part of her family life too because it they seem like very, the brothers were similar in their mm -hmm. response to this um, right. servant coming and everything, especially when they heard who he was, Abraham's servant and all of that. So a contract is made. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. uh, she's, you know, asked to be, come with this servant back to Abraham, who was an uncle, but probably someone she had never met. Um, he had been got long gone from this area um, to go meet a man she never met <laughs> to marry him so right. what what did we see as a response there in that in that situation she, so yeah go ahead, you go ahead. well yeah. i think i think the one thing that you see from her brother's response mm -hmm. and also her her response is that this was a god-fearing family yeah right the mm -hmm. the servant told of you know this how he had prayed mm -hmm. to meet a woman at the well yes. to take home as as um, a wife for Isaac and they heard that and they immediately responded to that because yes. they were God fearing. They yeah. believed yeah. in, they believed that this was what God wanted yes. and she, they were quick to agree. Yes, <laughs> right? they were. The, but yeah. I like that they do ask her the next day, right? Isn't that kind of cool when, yeah. um, the yeah. servant wants to head home and, um, but I, no, I agree with you. They were on the same wavelength, but I love they, she, I thought of that too. That she must have had a, de a good relationship with her siblings because yeah. they kind of didn't want her to leave right away. Right. Yeah. You know. Right. We're like, take her, get her out of yeah. here. You know. Like, let's, <laughs> let's think this over a little bit. Yeah. Let's give her like, some we're, time. we're on board, yeah. but we would like to keep her with keep us. Her, yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 So it kind of shows that they that she was pleasant, probably to be mm -hmm. have around. Yeah. You know. Okay. So, um, the the plan's made. I guess the servant wants to head out. And we'll pick it up maybe. Grace, do you want to read that maybe? Just to put us, give us We're some, in, uh, in 24, verse 56. You're right on that page okay. there. And he said to them, do not hinder me since the Lord has prospered my way. Send me away so that I may go to my master. Do you want to keep reading? Yeah. So they said, we will call the young woman and ask her personally. Then they called Rebecca and said, will you go with this man? And she said, I will go. So they so, sent Rebecca away, yeah. her sister and her nurse, and Abraham's servant and his men. And they blessed Rebecca and said to her, O sister, may you become the mother of thousands, of tens of thousands, and may your descendants possess the gates of those who hate them. Wow. Okay, so good. So once again, 
They loved her. They loved her. They wanted her around. Blessing to have. <laughs> that is a good blessing. Yeah. That is a beautiful blessing. Mm -hmm. And I, but again, I just see that decisiveness, don't you? Right. Yeah. Yeah. I will go. I no question go. about it. Yeah. I will go. This yeah. is what God has called for me to do, and right. this is who God has called for me yeah. to be with, and yeah. I will go. Which I, like I think that. I'm, I know I'm very opposite. I am a classic youngest, I think, where I ask everybody's opinion. I'm like, do you think I should do this? <laughs> <laughs> I do know about my favorite color. My mom knows. I'm like, what's my favorite color, you think? But I love it. Like, it was encouraging to be bold and to say, mm -hmm. like, this is God's plan for my life. Like, I'm going yeah. without yeah. hesitation. Great courage. Yeah. Yeah, she really did. Yeah. She had godly courage. And that always, that shakes me. I, you know, it always kind of gives me that little... Yeah. too because I don't you know I can tend to not always be so courageous you know mm -hmm. so yeah you just see so much of the richness of her character right yeah. you, you know the the contrast between her beauty and her purity yeah and her boldness and her humility right. you know there, it, she's just so there's there's so much there right yeah, yeah definitely a very uh good example for us as women to yeah. see that. She's absolutely. somebody I would want to hang out with. Like yeah. that's my thing. I always yeah. think like, wow, like, she's somebody I would want to, like right. you said, to sit near and just like take yeah. in, you know, and just anyway, like what yeah. does she do? She's someone who I want to be. I yeah. want to be like that. Right. I want to be bold and right. humble. I want to be right. you know, beautiful, don't we all? Yeah, exactly, <laughs> right? exactly. Yeah. And, you know, you think about that even in terms of what she was saying yes to. I mean, this was like, a, I think a 400 mile journey on camels and, through desert-like uh, conditions. Um, you don't know what the man will look like. <laughs> no Google Maps. Yeah, right. No. She hasn't that's met him yet. No, that's right. Yes. There's that yeah. too. My flash you know? comes out. I'm like, what would he look like? Yeah. yeah. What would yeah. he be like? Yeah. And would he be kind and um, good to her? You know, that kind of thing too. Right. I guess maybe she may have gotten some, well, certainly the Lord was working in her heart and giving her clues too. I think the servant's the way he approached her and was mm -hmm. very God fearing, like you said, right. and um, and very, you could tell bringing the jewels, it, it showed that you know she was um, already treasured in a way, you know, mm -hmm. that there should be very, someone very special to the household. Right. So that that is a blessing that was given to her. Um, but yeah, you know, I think of sometimes contrast in our life, even sometimes to go on a trip. You know, we want every detail. We want to make sure. Well, where will we be staying? And is the hotel clean? Is it safe? Is that you know we can mm -hmm. want so much reassurance sometimes right. even just to do the simplest of things. You know, mm -hmm. um, will I be well received? Will be you know? I mean, we can mm -hmm. go down all those rabbit trails, and yet there was a decisiveness there that mm -hmm. I think we all you know would aspire mm -hmm. to be more like that. You right. know, and Jesus calls us. Is it just yes, Lord? Not well. Give me the details first, God. I have and some conditions before yeah, we, <laughs> we go, you know. Yeah. There's a couple like, of hoops to jump through before I decide. Right. Check Yelp yeah. or, you know, <laughs> you know yeah. TripAdvisor. Yeah. It's like, nope, we're we going, went. you know. And uh, so, yeah, that is that is a, a wonderful blessing about Rebecca. So we're, we're really loving on Rebecca. Mm -hmm. we, we love that she comes now to meet um, her her betrothed. And, and she, I think it's sweet that where does she find Isaac? You know, we're told he's he's out in a field meditating, which I would imagine, uh, you know, is him praying, thinking mm -hmm. of the things of God, maybe worshiping even out there. It says in verse 63, he's out meditating the fields mm -hmm. in the evening, and he sees her coming. It's really the, like a sweet like a, love story. Yeah, it yeah. is. Yeah. Yeah. And her, yeah, sorry, go ahead. Well, her first response when she is, it's um, the, when the servant answered, who, or when she asked, who is that? The yeah. servant answered, it's my master. And her first response was to cover herself know, as no. a sign of respect. That's right. Yeah, so yes. it's just, it's a beautiful unfolding of a love story. Love story. That yeah. is just so perfect that we're studying this as we approach Valentine's Day. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, they're not the typical like notions either too. Like she was serving somebody he was meditating in the field they're not these like wow they were really impressing me by doing x y and z like yeah but right then it became such like the ideal romantic love story of these two people being like why well, like for me i'm like oh i want that like right. that's amazing right. and again lessons to be learned i mean be prayerful as you're waiting yeah. for god to bring that spouse be serving yeah. be yeah. developing your character you know mm -hmm. uh for any young single ladies out there, you know, um, I remember hearing something one time that it's not so much about finding the right person, but becoming the right person. Yeah. You know, you, you bring yourself into that mm -hmm. marriage. Are you working on you while you're waiting and developing godly character, mm -hmm. having a strong relationship with the Lord? I think that's um, yeah. a lot of why when they did come together, it seemed so 
sweet and kind of yeah. magical, you know? And right. I think the sweet, I was like, who's that? You know, besides you laugh, <laughs> yeah. how is this said? Who's that man yeah. walking yeah. in the field? Was it with like an admiration, you know? Mm -hmm. um, my, we, know oh, we know you felt that way. Yes, <laughs> who's that? <now? laughs> my daughter, Ashley, though, she did that with her, her husband, Adam. Yeah. She walked into of all places at Judges Community College cafeteria with another friend from church and saw Adam across and said, who's that? And we laughed to this day because he can't believe that he caused such a stir, you know? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it was kind of fun. Yeah. Some, it's a fun story. But um, so they, they come together and, and maybe, Jen, you just read that, uh, that verse there, 67, I think is... Yeah. Um, we can springboard about the whole idea of their love, their sure. love story. Yep. And Isaac brought her into the tent of his mother, Sarah, and took Rebecca to be his wife. Isaac loved her and he was comforted after his mother's death. Yeah. So it's just such, you know, he, I, I mean, it's very clear. There's yes. no ambiguity here. Right. Isaac loved her right. and, he, and she comforted him. She mm -hmm. was his helpmate. Yeah. yeah. It's so lovely to see these yeah. um, biblical examples of a beautiful marriage. Um, unfortunately, I think it, the world sometimes thinks, do you think there's a misconception sometimes outside the, the kingdom of God of how women are treated or esteemed as Christians? Have you ever found that? Like, even like, say, with friends who don't know the Lord, like, what, what's their take? On how women are treated within the church? Yes. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, I think in some ways they maybe could have misconceptions or they themselves were once in the church and, and maybe saw it happen where maybe women were kind of minimized in their gifts. Mm -hmm. Which, um, I mean, growing up with a dad, like, you know, your husband, <laughs> he was so encouraging of, like, our gifts growing up. So I felt like I never knew that, but talking with friends, yes, I think that's 100% a thing. And instead of uplifting women within their gifts, whether that be in worship or in tech or whatever, lifting them up and not so much minimizing them and saying, well, you're second class mm -hmm. citizen. Yeah. I think right. a lot of my friends see that as the church. That's how they see women. They're a second class citizen. They don't have strengths. They don't have talents, which it, for we know, like we, we don't see that. We're, we know we're complimentary. I mean, like even yes. Eve was yeah. created to compliment where maybe right. Adam didn't, you know, he lacked. So, um, yeah, I think that is a, a very normal thing. And I think because it already kind of happens in the secular world where maybe there is that gray area i mean jen you know too you work in corporate where sometimes we oh, yeah. can be seen as like ah, oh, your, your emotions are getting in yeah. the way you know yeah. which isn't yeah. the case i mean and sometimes you need a little bit of an emotional perspective mm -hmm. on things mm -hmm. but yeah. i definitely think that's something but i know we've even talked about that together of right. just that perspective so i feel like even you sharing on it as well yeah, yeah i mean i work in the technology industry mm -hmm. very male dominated yeah. way more men than than women mm -hmm. um but I think, so I, I, you know, I don't know what to draw from that, except that, you know, sometimes you feel like you have to work harder, mm -hmm. you know, to, yeah. be, to yeah. be valued. And I, th and that's not the model that is given to us through the Bible, yeah. you know, exactly. it really is not. And um, you can see how they were, um, you know, partners and you can yes. see through other relationships throughout the Bible where mm -hmm. their men and women are complimentary to one yes. another in, in a marriage. Um, I know that that's how it works even in my own marriage, and yes. I'm just so blessed that, that yeah. you know, I personally have that. Right. Mm -hmm. And that's, I think, you know, we, we always want to come against the lie with truth and right here in this just little vignette. Yeah. We've already seen the brothers esteeming their sister's opinion yep. on things. We see Isaac esteeming his wife. We see yeah. the how important, how she ha absolutely had to say that she was a very strong woman, um, you know, and so we need to know that. And that's not just, that's Old Testament, New Testament, mm -hmm. um, especially Jesus. Um, that's a, a story for another day, but mm -hmm. how women became degraded somewhat yeah. in that intertestamental period. Um, but yet how God in the scripture, uh, women are cherished, esteemed, mm -hmm. loved, and have a very unique role. And I, I read a quote, it was on Instagram or something recently, and it wasn't even a Christian quote, but I thought it was interesting in that it offered this. Um, you know, so many women are trying to be, um, you know, men, so to speak, instead of embracing what men could never be, which mm -hmm. is a woman. Like mm -hmm. all the, the different traits God has placed in us that are so unique. Right. And, and, um, why would we disdain them? We want to embrace them, develop them, 
grow in them and they look different on all of us and and they can be expressed in so many ways but uh, not to ever disdain that or mm-hmm. feel yeah. less than right I mean that's not God's heart at all so yeah and you still see her femininity through it all Absolutely. you know you still see yeah. the softness yeah, and the humility yeah. and, right and at the same time yeah. as you see her boldness and her right. courageousness right and I think, I think it, it's even and I don't know if you're gonna touch base on this but an encouragement to maybe even women who are in the church now who see you know oh i could never get involved in women's ministry or a type of ministry because i don't fit the molds of what a christian woman maybe looks like right now but i think rebecca is the perfect example of mm-hmm. it's not the person who has their you know we have cups of tea right now <laughs> but the person who has that you know the cup of tea and the perfectly coiffed hair and the ma- i mean i don't look like this every day you know yeah. but it, it doesn't always look like that and so i think rebecca is a really good example that sometimes you don't fit the norm but god still in his like the gifts that he's given you mm-hmm. like he uses you amazingly so even just to encourage women who maybe are a little bit like well i don't know if i could be used it's mm-hmm. like god's going to use you no matter what because he's, right. he's made you yes. and he's gifted you in those things right you know? right. right yeah absolutely yeah. so they have they have this beautiful marriage um in that there's definitely mutual love later on uh even after she's had her children there's a time where they go down into gerar that's in chapter 26 and Mm -hmm. uh isaac does a little bit like his dad did with sarah kind of passed rebecca she was still like gorgeous after all these years because she had 20 years of infertility and now Mm -hmm. she had had uh boys and they were grown (laughs) and then here there was a little interlude where they had to go into another area and he passed her off as um, his sister and the leader of Bimelech at the time, uh, having to look out his window. And it says in verse 8 of chapter 26 that Isaac was showing endearment to Rebecca's wife. So then again, we get a little glimpse into their marriage mm-hmm. that's mm-hmm. sweet and tender and affectionate and playful. Right. So that's kind mm-hmm. of hope for us older ladies that that kind of thing can <laughs> keep, yeah. you know, keep the fire going there, you know, and be a model of love, of marital love, even yeah. as we get older. Yeah. Um, so I liked that about her as well. And just yeah. another sweet little picture I feel like we get to see of her. Right. Because um, even in that verse 9, it says, quite obviously, she is your wife. Like, yeah. Quite obviously. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Not yeah. 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 For you. <laughs> Yeah. I'm sorry, Jen. Well, I, there, you know, another example, you know, she went through that period of infertility. Yes. And at the time, it was acceptable for men to have multiple wives. That's and yet right. he didn't take a, a different know, wife. I he was that. faithful to her. Yes. He, you know, he prayed for her. He mm-hmm. honored her. I, yeah. um, Absolutely. You know, so we see this... Um, I think, you know, just going back to kind of the true love and the love story that yes. and the love that they shared. Yes. You, know, you see that throughout. Completely monogamous. There was no yeah. Hagar. There was no, you know, yeah. even right. um, later on, there'll be different concubines and, you know, ner- whatever, um, that sometimes birthed other sons for families, but not in there. They're very mm-hmm. unique. It was very sweet. And yeah. he seemed very completely content with him, just him and Rebecca with no children. But I think she was feeling differently about it, right? We, mm-hmm. we sense that. That's why he prayed for her, um, you know, and he went to the Lord and, and asked that um, in verse 20, it says Isaac was 40 years old when he took Rebecca's wife. And um, in 21, it says, now Isaac pleaded with the Lord for his wife because she was barren and the Lord granted his plea and Rebecca's wife conceived. So again, I see, you know, for her sake, he, he, he wanted her to, mm-hmm. he, it, it pained him to see right. that she had this feeling of lacking, even though I don't think it came from him. You know, it was probably something, like you were saying, just an internal, you know, right. kind of value that mm-hmm. was at that time, especially. Um, so here we have, she's now she's expecting. So um, she's given a prophecy. So maybe, do you want to read that, uh, Jen? In sure. verse 23 of chapter 25, she's given right. this prophecy. Well, maybe go before it, yeah. why she even goes. So, <laughs> I mean, she asked, why is this happening to me? Yeah. Right? So she went to inquire of the Lord, and the Lord said to her, Two nations are in your womb. Two peoples will come from you and be separated. One people will be, will be stronger than the other, and the older will serve the younger. Yeah. Wow. So. <laughs> I, would love, I would love that prophecy in my life. <laughs> would you like to win yeah. someday? No, I wow. So. I don't think so. <laughs> well, you know, I think no sonograms or anything. She, maybe that's how she found out she was having twins. There was so much movement. She probably was mm-hmm. wondering, what is going on yeah. here? First baby, but too. Yeah. You have to think about the parallel almost to the the message that Mary was given, you yeah. know, right? And here she is given a prophecy from the Lord that was upside down. 
right? Yes. The, o- the older isn't meant to serve the younger, right? right? A woman isn't supposed to have a, a child, you know, without having, uh, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it happened, you know, so like the, there's this, uh, I guess I would imagine there'd be kind of this unbelief, right? right. Or this like uh, almost, um, you know, questioning, like, yeah. Lord, what are you doing in right. my life? What is this? What right. are, What's happening here? Yeah. So, um, you know, I think that that's, it's count. It's countercultural. It's opposite, exactly. right? Yeah. It's upside down. Like down, so many yeah. things of mm. God's world, up, they look upside down, right, mm. to our world. Worlds, right. and we try to apply our logic and our understanding yep. of things, and, and that's we, where it really ties in. It's like our ways are not His ways. ways. Yeah, you know? so exactly. Right. And thank goodness they aren't. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. I wonder. I mean, this is now, and this is a you know podcast, so we're we can kind of speculate. I think because you know, I just wonder as I thought about this. Um, do you? Th- Rebecca's wonderful. We love her. She's we've mm-hmm. talked about all her amazing strengths, but she's also a human being just like us and I'm sure she, there was things and I wonder if hearing that and knowing that as much as that was a wonderful gift to be given a prophecy straight to a woman now, okay? This mm-hmm. is early on in the the account of mankind and already God is very directly speaking to her. He didn't bring it to Isaac necessarily, right to right mm-hmm. to Rebecca. This was her sweet prophecy promise from God yes it was counterintuitive in a sense it was not the way things typically went so which made it even maybe even a little more special to hear that um wonder what she did with it wonder if she talked to Isaac about it we don't really know Mm -hmm. um I wonder if in some ways that set her preference for um Jacob in in motion a little like you know Mm -hmm. what I'm saying like that's something I think we have to be careful of as um as women spiritual women similar to what we talked about last week uh as women we love spiritual things you know eve was at the tree wanting to know more and um but we have to guard our heart a little i think because of deception because maybe um somehow she got that a little bit backward you know she had been given this but there had to be that trust in god of how he was going to work that out Mm -hmm. you know and that's where i think she got kind of sucked into um thinking now she was going to make it happen. Like, thanks, God, for the promise. Now I'll take it from here, you know, yeah. maybe a little, you yeah, know, a little right. in a way. Um, yeah, well, I mean, kind of, I mean, what we see in the uh, in the coming chapter mm-hmm. is how she basically enters into this deceit. Yeah. Right, where she, you know, she works with Jacob to deceive her husband mm-hmm. and, yes. to, uh, and to get him to... Um, give the blessing to the the younger son right. instead of the older son as was tradition right. so you know we see this deceit we see this manipulation mm-hmm. and um you know it's almost as if her boldness that served her so well mm-hmm. for in her life yes. then becomes a great failing exactly right? yeah. yeah and and you and I was thinking about this too because it says even prior to that that you know she favored Jacob and Isaac favored Esau and it's kind of funny because I don't know how you feel about it but I feel like Isaac in some ways is a little on the passive side in mm-hmm. his personality like mm-hmm. not in a bad way but he's a little I just think of him a little contemplative a little like yeah right don't you everything's kinda? a good idea mm-hmm. <laughs> like, I don't know I just feel like he's a, it, there's something about that about him and um and he has a strong wife and that's great because that can work right you have a husband's maybe a little more laid back a little mm-hmm. more contemplative and she loved him for that you know mm-hmm. like right. that was like oh i like that about him you know um and jacob was a little like that he was a little bit more of a homebody he was a little, i think he probably had more mm-hmm. of a little laid back gentle personality Issa was ruddy and like a man macho guy you know right. and that was kind of isaac's i think like opposite and like he kind of admired him for it sure. you know so yeah. there was this little funny to family dynamic that can happen right. sometimes right in family dynamics but um <clears throat> the thing was i think even jacob in many ways seemed to rebecca anyway that he honored the things of god more like even the way he wanted that birthright remember with the stew mm-hmm. how he kind of tricked esau into right. that, giving it to him it's almost like there was these patterns already laid down in the family you know we're the, the spiritual minded yeah you know, these guys you know it's mm-hmm. kind of unfortunately it got, it got like that yeah. and when we see those things happening we need to guard it you know right yeah. i mean that's definitely a cautionary tale here you can't if there's any of that happening in your family or whatever you got to really nip that you know yeah. because it can lead to more trouble yeah um and she was used to maybe taking not so much a lead with isaac but 
because he maybe was a little bit more laid back, you know, she kind of had gotten used to that, you know, role of sort of making some dis I, I, I'm just wondering if some of that pattern, yeah, you I, know, was laid down, you know, and it's just, again, that, uh, that, t um, that caution for us. But yes, uh, like Jen said, there's this, this deceit that goes on. Now, uh, Grace, do me a favor. Um, in chapter 27, I just want to lay down um, where Isaac tells Esau, maybe read those first um, five verses. Okay. That would be good. One through five. Yeah. Now it came to pass, when Isaac was old and his eyes were so dim that he could not see, that he called Esau, his older son, and said to him, My son, and he answered him, Here I am. Then he said, Behold now, I am old, I do not know the day of my death. Now therefore, please take your weapons, your quiver and your bow, and go out to the field and hunt game for me, and make me, a, uh, make me savory food such as I love, and bring it to me, that I may eat, that my soul may bless you before I die. Now Rebekah was listening when Isaac spoke to Esau his son, and Esau went to the field to hunt game and to bring it. Do you want to continue reading? Um, just to five, I think. Oh, no, you did that. No, that's fine. Okay. Okay, so she hears this, but oh, in verse six, all of a sudden it goes, she, like, this is maybe the morning of, she overhears this. What does she do? She immediately goes mm -hmm. and gets Jacob and gets this plan. Oh boy. Again, that quick, quick girl. She yeah. she moves fast. And so many times, like probably, I don't know, I was going to say nine times out of 10, it's a good thing. Now I'm not so sure really, to be honest with you. I think there's something about pausing. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> right a little bit right. it is good to be hard working and not li yeah. you know lollygaggy too much on things but there's something to be said too that especially when there seems to be a crisis don't knee jerk right? right well you know she she was told what would happen she was told so yes. she sees this coming she sees right. that uh, that Esau is going to be blessed and that's against God's will. So she sees this problem mm -hmm. and immediately she wants to take control. She wants to yeah. take it into her own hands yeah. and mm -hmm. she wants to fix the problem. And I, I know, I feel that, you know, yeah. <laughs> that resonates with me. I want to yes. fix things. And, yeah. right. um, but what she should have done is she should have gone to the Lord. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, she should have paused Yeah. and she should have prayed and yes. she should have asked God, she should have gone to God in prayer and petition and said, Lord, my husband is about to make this giant mistake. Can you yeah. please help him? <laughs> right. right. Can you yeah. do, can your will be done here? And she just took it into her her own, own hands. hands. Mm -hmm. yeah. And you know, hearkening back to what you shared earlier, Jen, God works his plans out mm -hmm. in ways that we don't ever see coming. Right. So, you know, I don't know how it would have been different if she had paused and waited and prayed and just said, "Well, yeah. if he blesses them, then God's got." I think of that. You know, the faith of a Abraham was that even if I actually end up sacrificing my son, God yeah. will figure a way to raise yeah. him up. He believed that even in the worst case scenario, God yeah. would fix it. That's and he's applauded for yeah. his faith. Um, I think we need to. That's true faith because sometimes, like you said, we see we see it coming. We're very. You know, this cannot happen this way. This cannot happen this way. Right. This cannot happen this way. And then yeah. we go and we want it, you know. Yeah. And what if it did happen that way? What if Isaac did just put his hand on Esau that day? God could have completely flipped that in right. a matter of hours if, if he so chooses. And we knew he wanted to bring mm -hmm. the messianic line. That's the big, that's God's number one agenda through the foundations of the world before the foundations were laid with mm -hmm. salvation. You know, right. it is the crowning theme of scripture. And that plan was not to be thwarted. The mm -hmm. Messiah would come through Jacob. Yeah. And so regardless of Isaac's blessing, although I agree with you, it was important. Um, God can override blessing or curses on right. our life yeah. given up to us by man because his, his blessing trumps every mm -hmm. other blessing, you know? So um, again, it's that trust there. What's so. the phrase? It's like, God doesn't say whoops. <laughs> right, exactly. Yeah. But you know, we've all been there. Mm -hmm. And yeah. we've tried to help God along for some reason. Um, yeah. I, <laughs> I think it could be tempting to say, well, she was only doing what God wanted her to do. It can be really right. tempting, tempting to read to this think that. and say, yeah. well, you know, God told her she was just doing what yeah. God right. wanted. Right. But, um, you know, I don't, God doesn't call us to deceive our husbands. God it's, doesn't call us to yes, sin in that's order right. to, no. to teach our children his, to sin. Right. right yeah. To fulfill his yeah. will. Right. You know, so. 
God calls us to be obedient, and, and we need to trust God that his mm-hmm. sovereign will will be fulfilled. Exactly. And even though we don't see how, how. We don't see how it's possible. It could seem impossible to us. Right. But and there's just that's so echoed all through Scripture. In, in Habakkuk, it says, um, this is when Habakkuk had gone to the Lord and saying, you know, what are you going to do about this terrible situation? And um, the Lord responds to him, and, he's, and part of that is, for the vision is yet for an appointed time, and at the end it will speak and it will not lie, though it tarries, wait for it, because it will surely come, it will not tarry. When God gives a promise, he's going to fulfill it. Mm-hmm. And it may not even like make sense to our rationality or the way we see things coming mm-hmm. or unfolding, again, what we're, we've been just reiterating. But I think about that even with the apostles, with Jesus, when he's, you know, so many times in the, the Gospels, it always makes me chuckle when I, like, who, how did they not know? Because he said it so many times, yeah. point blank. I'm going to Jerusalem. The Son of Man will be crucified, but he will be yeah. raised on the third day. And they see, they just, they couldn't wrap their heads around that. And right. even Peter rebuked him, right? But, you know, it can't go that way. That's not the way this is going to go, Lord. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like, no, he always, you know. So it's just right. interesting how there's just that, that happens all through Scripture. Um so you're right. She she usurps that as much as they were partners. Unfortunately, in this in this instance, she overstepped and she disobeyed God because there is a high, uh, you know a submission. First of all, just honoring your husband, not right. deceiving him, but also that trusting that God mm-hmm. was going to use him in, in that way. Um, whether she saw a lacking in him and thought, well, he's he's not listening to God, mm. you know, it's like, you know, yeah. she, that wasn't her place to right. do that and uh, to play the Holy Spirit. Yeah. So important. Um, and, I mean, we see God's will still fulfilled because yes. his will will be fulfilled no matter Absolutely. what. Absolutely. Um, but we, then we see all these consequences of Exactly. Of Talk sin. about that, Jim. Right. What happens, the consequences of this? Well, so, I mean, we see Esau takes a wife, and it says in uh, 2635, they made life bitter for Isaac and Rebekah. That's right. So also, I mean, we know that um, Isaac is so angry that his blessing has been stolen from him that he wants to kill Jacob. Right. And so then Jacob has to flee. Mm -hmm. And in the coming chapters then, of course, we learn, you know, he goes to live with Rebekah's brother. and. He is. He gets a kind of gets a taste of his own medicine. He sure does. Right? He, yeah. He who was who deceived then becomes, See? or he who was the deceiver then becomes deceived. Absolutely. Right? And almost whole, in the same way, like kind of under clothing, like the guise of switching out someone. Yeah. Exactly. Right? With exactly. Leah, which we'll so, talk about her next week. Leah. Yeah. So all of these consequences mm-hmm. then come about. So God still judges them, mm-hmm. even though His will has been fulfilled. Exactly. Yeah. And I think. Of Poor Rebecca, that's that was her favorite son, and we know right. that. And then she says, "Let your yeah. let the curse be upon me." And she, and and it was. She never saw him again when yeah. she had a flea. She mm-hmm. the by the time he came back, she had passed on. So it was it, it yeah. It, it's as much well as she's we we look at one since we want to be Rebecca. We yeah. also want to learn cautionary, oh, you know, yeah. tale as all of our yeah. stories have that. I think a little bit of both in it, mm-hmm. maybe. And I even I not even to make this like a. But like even I think of like the weird complexes both Esau and Jacob had with having favoritism of the oh, parents. Oh yeah. like, like no wonder yeah. Esau might have been a little bit bitter towards you because right. you were like trying to interfere. You know what I mean? You just think of yes. those things you don't know all in detail, but it's like you kind of have to take from account. Yes. There may have been some weird rela- dynamics within that right. family because of the favoritism shown. You know, right. between the two. Right. You know dysfunctional family oh my gosh from page one through the end i mean we really that's one thing about the bible that's so in a sense encouraging because it does not do everything rosy i mean absolutely there's glowing beautiful you know we talked about some of those tonight that that were just so ideal it seemed like some of the situations but it was very real and honest about our our path is is ups and downs mm-hmm. sometimes yeah. and there's mm-hmm. failing and there's succeeding and yet god yet yeah. god in his grace continues to use these people to usher in right. the eternal plan of salvation and that mm-hmm. they would be the ancestors of jesus and uh, i love that i love his grace that's just mm-hmm. shown through this story uh through the whole book of the bible mm-hmm. um so maybe is there anything else about that you wanted to add um, well, I guess just that, you know, when you look at, at Jesus, the women in Jesus's line, yes. you know, they are all sinful. 
They're yeah. all sinful, and God still uses them for yes. his redemptive story. Right. Mm-hmm. Right. So, and I think that gives us, as women, uh, promise and that hope, sure right, that yes. God can use us, you know, because we're all sinners. Right. Mm-hmm. But God used... Um, God used Rebecca just as he used Rahab and, you yes. know, all of the women Tamar. in Jesus' line yeah. right, yeah. To, and Ruth. And, right. you know, when you look at them, they're yes. not, they're not the model, you know, they're not some, they have faults. They right. have, they sin. Yeah. And we There were do. people that were not even considered part of the Jewish clan. They were right. outside the family, you know, Moabitess, yeah. you know, different, right. So, yeah. Yeah. And God does that. That is, it is, that does give us great hope in knowing that that's, this is how he uses us. And, and, um, and so we've learned a lot about Rebecca, but one of the things I think we'll maybe end with here when I have these two girls speak to this is, um, one of the things we're hoping to do each week is the Bible is the gospel being preached from Genesis to Revelation. It's all about mm-hmm. Jesus. Um, mm-hmm. He is the the crowning theme of, of the Bible. He spoke of it himself when he says, you search the scriptures. And he said this to the religious people at the time, um, in that you think your salvation is there, but they speak of me, he said. And they did not like that he said that. But Jesus is being proclaimed, really, and foreshadowed mm-hmm. through so many of these beautiful stories right in Genesis. Um, these accounts, I don't, I don't, maybe I shouldn't call them stories. I remember Ken Ham saying, don't call them stories. That sounds mm. like fairy tales. Mm. Yeah, they're accounts. <laughs> they're historical accounts of, a, yeah. of, mm-hmm. of, of what God has of done. People. His story, yeah. right? Yeah. So, um, so Grace, you were sharing to me the other night, and I just loved some of what you had seen in this. Yeah. 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 So I felt like I saw so much just, like my mom said, it's, it's the Old Testament and the New Testament. They're all, it's, it's you know, prophetic to what it was to come. And I know for me, it's really, and I think you guys mentioned this in Eve, like the story of Eve, like the first thing you always do reading a passage, you're always like, how does this relate to me? But we always want to look at how does this relate to God? Because once I see who God is, it's like I have a better understanding of who he made me to be. That's right. And as I, I was reading this, I kind of just saw such the image of like, Rebe- like with the question with Isaac and Rebecca, their relationship of how much it reflected Christ and the church and I took notes down of comparing the two so I you know for both Rebecca and the church they were chosen for marriage before they knew and that's in Ephesians 1 if you want to like reference that Um, necessary for the accomplishment of God's eternal purpose in Ephesians 3 it's going to reference that in the New Testament they were destined to share in the glory of a son John 17 you're going to see that learned of the son through uh, his representative right the Holy Spirit must leave all with joy to be with the son are loved and cared for by the son right you know and it's right. it's we're loved and cared by jesus christ the son he came and died for our sins and then for isaac and jesus were promised before their coming they appeared at the appointed time they were conceived and born miraculously um given a special name before their birth offered up in sacrifice by the father right by their father um, brought back from the dead in a way, right? We, yes. You see that Isaac escaped that. his own death, yeah. right? Yeah, Abraham. Um, head of a great company to bless all people. And they were preparing a place for the bride, just like God is preparing a place for us to come for the bridegroom, right? And had a ministry of prayer while the bride could come. So it's, you know, God's always intervening even now for us. And we see that with yes. Isaac. He was in the field meditating and he was praying all along, even through his, his marriage with Rebecca for his bride and for his bride and so Mm -hmm. I think we see that so much for Jesus how he he came in and he was the perfect sacrifice for us he was you know he's always coming for our good for you know and I so I just think that's so reflective of of now because that's always the thing I'm like how is this relevant to today but it really is it's from Genesis to Revelation it's all applying to us it never loses its relevancy we don't need to be like these cool hip people to make it this relatable thing because God and the Holy Spirit really just make it come to life and make it relevant and make it, you know, a thing that we can apply to ourselves. So that's what I got from the whole story of what I really focused in on for Rebecca and Mm -hmm. and Isaac, but mainly for Rebecca as a whole, um, as a heroine of the Bible. Yeah. And like you said, foreshadowing the church and being a spouse Mm -hmm. to the son. Yeah. Beautiful. Lovely. Yeah. How about you? Well, I, I just think, like I was saying, that direct connection that you can draw from Rebecca to Jesus. Yes. You know, and the parallel from the message that she was given as she was expecting and waiting you know, for her, her sons to be born. Um, just that, that direct line that you can see from her life, her sinful nature, her, sin, her, her strengths and her weaknesses right. you know, as a part of God's unfolding story Amen. and how Jesus will come sinless 
yes. you know, through all these sinful people yes. and just that direct connection is yeah. just something that I find yeah. really encouraging. Amen. Yeah. And I think also, Jen, I just, just as a little tag at the end, I, I, I don't want to sign off until, because you had mentioned yeah. it too, um, this is a great picture of God's sovereignty. I mean, mm-hmm. really, isn't it, right? Mm-hmm. I yeah. mean, you've said that in so many words just now, but again, just want to reiterate, yeah. um, ladies and Liz, you know, <laughs> we can trust in his mm-hmm. sovereignty. Mm-hmm. I mean, his plans will go forward. I, it's such right. a comfort because yeah. there are so many voices right now, and sometimes, I don't know, you watch the news, things seem like kind of out of, really out of control, oh, yeah. right? Yeah. You think, yeah. Bobby and I sometimes look at each other, this is out of control. Things are out of control. It's upside down. But, you know, God is sovereign, and every promise in the book is yes and amen, Mm -hmm. and he's going to fulfill them. And in his great wisdom, power, timing, I think Charles Spurgeon said, the sovereignty of God is the pillow in which I lay my head every night, you know, knowing he is in control. He will have his his say. We're studying the book of Revelation on Sundays. It's just... Um, it is a comfort to know that despite mm-hmm. our failings, despite the world going haywire, um, mm-hmm. God's plan just continues on and he, mm-hmm. he is powerful over all. We can trust him. Yes. Oh, that Rebecca had just trusted him a little better. Oh, mm-hmm. that Liz Hargraves in 2021 <laughs> would trust him a little better, you know, a little more. He's so worthy of our trust. Hasn't he shown himself so faithful? He yes. showed himself faithful to these yeah. people. Uh, despite their screw ups, he's, his plan still went forward. Uh, they had more things to learn, and, and we'll look at some of those in, in the weeks to come. But boy, oh boy, it, it is an encouragement to us. You know, mm. he, he's he is so trustworthy, ladies. So, whatever it is you're dealing with tonight, uh, maybe the failings of others in your life, that was one thing I thought of. You know, mm-hmm. um, God has blessed you. God has called a blessing over your life too because it tells us that we're his children and he has now grafted us into the promises of God that he has calls us his own children. I mean, that's amazing and and that um, he's with us and his plans mm-hmm. are going to go forward for us and our loved ones. So you take heart uh, for those promises you're holding on to. Mm-hmm. Uh, take heart tonight. I know I needed to hear that a lot this year. I really did. Yeah. There was times, yeah. you know, I walked with the Lord for a very long time, but, oh, you know, things can shake our faith as I think maybe she had a little bit of a crisis of faith. And, yeah. um, but we can take heart because God is going to work things out mm-hmm. and we can rest in him. And uh, so I pray that, that you'll take that to heart tonight. Um, my sisters and I just thank you so much. Mm-hmm. Oh, to God, let's look at look at the resources we have in this church. <laughs> you look for them because if you need prayer or you need encouragement, these are the women I want. This is part of my little strategy too. I want I want people to know like this is the body of Christ we get to have here at Calvary Chapel Hudson mm-hmm. Valley, which we're so I'm so, so in just giddy over it. <laughs> <laughs> My husband and I are just like, how oh, did they, we just get the best people sent here? Um, but we're just so blessed that we have women here in the church that are really a source of strength, and they're godly women, and they're walk, walking uh, in obedience to God, and they have wisdom to share, and they love to bless you. So if you ever need prayer or just a word, you look for us. You look for these lovely ladies here. Um, get to know them, and uh, we'll see you next week. All right, God bless.